Hello, I'm David Hunt, and welcome to my little section on Bent TV, amazing people from our community. Well, my guest today, you've probably heard his voice a million and one times, boring now, uh, respected through media, in TV, uh, <laughs> he just got up and walked away, uh, respected um, through TV, radio, advertising, the corporate world, for almost 40 years, yeah, he's really old. Kind You're to animals. Kind, are you? Kind. Oh, we'll have a discussion about that. Help old ladies across the street. I, I hear you don't. I hear you push them over when you see them. Or only if they've got a handbag. <laughs> only if they've got... Look, you see, I haven't even finished my little intro yet and he's taking over already. Best known for his What's voice so boring? on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> and, of course, we all know his voice when he says to those excited uh, contestants, Come, Come on, on down! down. But anyway, we'll get we'll get to that. So uh, much to cover. He narrates. Now, if I didn't do this, you'd be disappointed, wouldn't you? Well, I could have done it all for you. <laughs> but yours would have been too long. That's true. Yeah. Uh, narrates the, the beautiful Christmas windows in Myers uh, every year. Got to talk about that as well. So let's welcome, come on down, John D. Hello. Sorry, there's no audience? No, uh, no. Was, and there's no one Where the heck's the applause? <laughs> No, David, seriously, it's uh, it's lovely to be here. And even not seriously, it's lovely to be here. Oh, oh that's nice. Now, let's start. You was a kid. Uh, okay. Obnoxious, were you? I was gorgeous oh. um, because I was the chosen one. Right. Uh, born in East St Kilda uh -huh. in 1951. And I had three older sisters and mum. Dad was in La Rundle, uh, in a uh, mental hospital for most of my early life. Oh, okay. But oh, I had three sad. older sisters and mum, which was... Really fantastic upbringing, especially in the 50s, uh, because they gave me so much uh, understanding of, of the female presence. And uh, also the hand-me-downs of Bond Cottontails was fantastic. <laughs> and I swear by them today. Right, OK. I, I can see them. Uh, on, on from, oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my showing. Um, yeah, so uh, it was wonderful. Wonderful upbringing. And uh, to have that female influence, I mean, they talk about nurture and nature, but really was the, the wonderful nurture I had from my three sisters and, and mum. First time on stage, I believe there's a hole in the bucket. In the bucket, yes, there's a, there's a hole in the bucket, dear Henry. Uh, dear Georgie, at, uh, the local isn't it? Dear Georgie, dear Georgie. Uh, dear Eliza, dear Eliza. Oh, dear Eliza. Oh. And uh, <laughs> for our old, old members of the audience. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so that was um, at the local church. I sang it at the church concert. And I thought, gee, I love being on stage because mm. I'm a shy, retiring person that I am. Uh, I thought, this is great. And I, I liked performing and uh, did a few uh, tryouts for movies and things. But uh, I, my love was always listening to radio and listening to uh, late night radio. My first radio was a, a crystal set oh, uh, wow. that I attached the... Uh, the, the ground wire thing to the bed springs. You may remember that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, listening to, to radio the, with the cat's whisker. Uh, but then I used to love listening to commercial radio. Arch McCurdy, who I saw something on Facebook on recently, was a big favourite of mine, who did a jazz show on the ABC, Music to Midnight. So radio was something that uh, I thought, oh, I love to, I like to do that. Well, it was hard then because there wasn't the, the courses there are now. So I did a few things work-wise. Uh, I mean, I left school at 15. It was, it was hideous. I, I, my poor mother uh, had very little money and uh, I was, spent most of my high school time hiding in the toilets from, from bullies. And uh, at least that's my story. And uh, then I was actually left school at 15 and uh, got my sub-inter, if anybody remembers what that was, a sub-intermediate certificate. And Mum said, well, I'll send you off to Taylor's Business College, which is a very expensive place in Melbourne that would try and you know, force you through and very expensive. And I think I have the uh, only person who's failed Taylor's twice. Mm. Mum then got out the Age newspaper and said, right, we're going to find you a job. And she did. And I was an office boy at an engineering company in Richmond. Then I did an apprenticeship in hairdressing. Surprise! <laughs> and uh, then I worked for a Roger Sutter and Myhill company who sold toilets in South Melbourne. Mum heard an, advertise, uh, an advertisement on 3AW here in Melbourne for a radio school. Ah. So I went to the radio school 
was accepted, but lasted about two weeks because Why? I couldn't read the copy. I'm dyslexic. Oh, okay. And this is the dy dyslexia sounded like a send up then, didn't it? But the dyslexia was uh, causing me not to be able to read the copy. Of course, because it jumbles. Uh, the pipes were there, yep. but I couldn't read. So yep. I, I, wow. I got kicked. Uh, I left there and then went to um, Clark Sinclair, who had a, a radio school in St Kilda. And uh, from there, I was able to get uh, my first radio job in Griffith. But hold on, um, how how did you get on? You know, reading wise, you know, like because what, did it hold you back, or you thought, no, this is what I want to do? Well, it didn't hold me back, and I was able to kind of like sucker my way through. But back in the day, when I sort of like the late '60s, when I first started in radio, I would be given, and you one was given, like that thick of live copy to read. Mm. So a bit if you have a, an issue with a foot or, or, or some other impediment, if you do it a lot, you can quite often work your way through it. And that's what helped. It does uh, come back sometimes oh. uh, when I'm tired. Yeah. But my whole life in the media has been reading. And I mean, like on, on Wheel of Fortune and Price is Right and all those shows where you, you know, I'll have the something or Peter and I'll have the, huh, and I'm, I'm grabbing these cards and you've got to read and you've got to read it right. So I was able to sort of work my way through it. Look, well, congratulations there. Thank you I... so much, David. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's great but, seeing you. Uh -huh. <laughs> because that could, that has, I know people who have had it, it's held them back all their lives. As I say, it only happens when, um, well, like I am now, actually, a little bit dusty after being uh, at Hans's concert last night. Right. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> so uh, this is why maybe I'm not I'm a bit fumbly. But it was I was very lucky that in those days yeah. you had to read live copy. You had to read yeah. it right. Yeah. And because they they spent seventeen dollars fifty for that commercial read, mm. and you had to do it right. Now let's talk about your sexuality. Were you active as a, a no, younger look, person? No, I, I was always bi, but I never sort of saw myself. Not having a dad around uh, was uh, an issue for, and, and what you put on your psychologist hat now, but uh, I, I was always searching for daddy, and I think I found him. <laughs> no, sorry, dad. Uh, no, I was always looking for, I was always looking, uh, I was always a Mr. Father figure. Um, so I had a relationship with a guy who was much older than I, and mum was quite happy with it. Oh, okay. My mother was just yeah. uh, the most wonderful, accepting person and um, anyway, so, but I always, uh, yeah, I was always bi and I, I never saw any, any crossover, any difference. Um, I just loved everybody, David, <laughs> and everybody loved, loved me. me. Oh, well, so not what some of the people out there that just told me. Yeah, well, they've told me similar things about, anyway, um, yeah, so funnily enough, I've, I've really discovered, and <laughs> since I've been working at Joy, uh, I have been now... I didn't want to say pigeonholed because we don't pigeonhole anybody, but I'm actually pan. I'm so modern. Okay. I'm so modern. I'm pan. Yeah. Bi is so yesterday. Mm. Because if well, I... Well, what's pan then? Well, if I was stuck on a desert island yep. with one person, I wouldn't care who they were as long as I liked that person. Okay. The eye contact was there because it's always been about that and was the person someone who I could relate to. What happens below the neck really wasn't relevant for me as far as uh, my desires. Okay. Um, because my desires were, well, what do you got to bring? Relationships. Have you been in long-term relationships? Long-term relationships with, uh, not with guys. I, with one guy there was, that was uh, Alan, way back in the day. But um, then I had a long-term relationship with uh, girls. And so really, you know, if, if you had to put it into percentages, I would be 75% hetero, 25% homo. And um, I, but again, you know, I wouldn't mind who I'll go to bed with as long as I care for that person. And what, do you tell the women that? Oh, not really, because, uh, yeah, it wasn't really sort of a fact. Uh, most of them knew. Okay. Um, but it wasn't sort of brought up as a, like, I, I need to tell you something. Yep. Um, my wife for many years, for 33 years and three gorgeous kids, I mean, she knew, but uh, I, I was never active in the gay world. Okay. Um, but, and I never, you know, it wasn't sort of something that I mm. found necessary. My, my present partner, bless her heart, she is, uh, she's gorgeous and 
uh, and I've known her. She was my boss originally on three on uh, Wheel of Fortune 33 years ago, and we both got married. Both had three children, just not together. And um, we have in the last three years got together, and and she is very and she is also bi. Okay. And um, but we are so tight and connected, mm. but we have a hysterical time together. Yeah, fantastic. All right, back to Korea. Uh, you know, I hated Korea, especially North Korea. Uh, oh, boom, boom. That's the jokes are going to oh, flow, people. Look at the time. <laughs> Is the hand coming through yet to wrap us up? No, no, oh. it hasn't come through oh, yet, already, but already. hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Tell us, you know, your journey. It's been an extraordinary journey. Oh, look, I've been extremely lucky. A couple of factors. I never wanted to be number one, like out front, because there's always like there was the, the Burt Newtons and the Graham Kennedys and, and Don Lays and all that. Number one. Then there was the Pete Smiths, the John Deekses and whatever. Then there was people who were below that, N not meaning anything, but it's just I always love to be working on lots of different things. The only time I hosted a show myself was uh, Family Feud in Brisbane, and I hated it. I Why? Just, oh, because I was so restricted. Oh, okay. Because my love was working with the audience. Yep. Ah. And uh, being able to be the conduit between the audience and the artist. Fortunately, I was able to work with some wonderful people who I adored, starting with Ian Turpey and, 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 and many others, and uh, Andrew O'Keefe, who I worked with for, for 12 years and was just a sensational guy. And it breaks my heart to think how um, mm. the issues that poor he, uh, he has gone through. Uh, then John Burgess uh, for quite a while with Adriana and um, uh, Steve Weiser, just sensational people to work with. So, I, but and my love has always been to support them, okay, to make them look good, yeah. And in that way, I can get the audience to come along on the production journey, not and being very careful that I don't take over the role of what they're doing yep. because you can be very, uh, you can be wrong, and, and yeah. it's wrong because I'm just here to help them through. What about? Um as being a stand-up comedian, even no. have you done? Why? Never done. I'm too funny. Like I'm too <laughs> funny. <laughs> You're too funny. You'd show them all up. Okay. Also, look, I, I can't go, hey, let me tell you about my mother-in-law, you know, or stuff like that. I, I can't I, I, I can't sort of do gags. I can be funny, but I, I but it's it's just gotta come naturally. I I can't uh, get up and do a routine. I yeah. could if I could remember it all, but I don't really care. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that, that is a, the key to being good comedians, remember, remembering everything you've got to it, say. The you know, I mean, I, like I, I work with Will Anderson and uh, Charlie Clawson a lot, and um, they, they say I'm very funny. I have no idea why, because I don't try to do anything. I'm just sort of being myself. Mm. Let's talk about Wheel of Fortune. You know, like it's um, it, it's still happening around the world. I, yeah, sure. I'm, I've, I've sure seen it, is. it in the middle of the night. Still not sleeping. I'm still not sleeping. You're like, yeah. can we talk? Yeah, we should later. Uh, so what made that show so popular? Somebody's spinning a wheel and they clap every well, time the wheel. Well, look, it's a bit like um, Family Feud, uh, the, the Price is Right, all those game shows. Uh, th there was a chance for people to, that was my Adelaide chance or in Freedom Victoria chance, uh, to uh -huh. people to uh, see something before the news mm. uh, while they're making dinner those days are gone, you know. I mean, they just ain't that way no more. Mm. So people would love on, for instance, Price is Right. I still have a lot of folks going, mm, I used to love you on Price is Right, Mr. John. You're fantastic. Because <laughs> they might not have known who the, the third king of Russia would have been or England, but they knew the price of a fridge. So it, was, it spoke to a lot of people who otherwise couldn't get involved. And when we did it at Festival Hall, we did the show there for about four years, uh, the audience predominantly was made up of people from uh, Europe and they loved it. Mm. Um, Mary Papalopoulos, come on down. <laughs> Did and, you have trouble with some of well, the Well, Mary, I didn't have trouble with, but I, there was, and that really was a woman, Mary Papalopoulos. <laughs> and if, if you're watching Mary, <laughs> we're only going to use this camera. Is this it? We're just on a wide shot for no, the whole that, thing. No, that's your camera. Okay, well, let's cross to camera three. Anyway, okay, maybe not. Funnily enough, I host trivia uh, nights. Um, I believe so. Yeah, and um, we do at the end of the night. The shite is right. Oh, really? Yeah, and we you know, come on down, and you've got to guess. You know, like, there's a Jesus. You clock playing rights that, for that? 
Uh, no, because it's called the Shiger's Ride. Ah, fair enough. Mm. Okay. And I don't say come on down. I could do it for you. I could do some voiceovers for you. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that. You know, like the, the, the price is right and the new price is right because... That was, you know, like you mentioned. It's a new car. It's oh, a sorry. new car. It's like Pavlov's it, dog. Yeah, it's just phenomenal how how popular that show was, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and the reason why they still exist in the US and they don't exist in Australia at the moment is because in the US, David will make the show, own the show, and then David's minions go out and sell the show to the 400 television stations and the networks mm. out there, as you yeah. know. Yeah. So that's how it's able to be yeah. franchised out or uh, on oh, sold. and the population compared to and Australia. And the population too. Yeah. Yeah, like you've moved on for, from that. Do you do any voiceover at, um, t on TV anymore? No, I, uh, I started at Channel 7. It was funny because I was in radio, as I said, and, and we're kind of like leaping around here a bit, but it's, uh, it's worthwhile telling this particular story. I was at 3UZ and I went to 3DB, another station at the time, it was called DB Music with Brendan Sheedy, and uh, I took on an administrative role. Ah. So I went off from being on air to working 13, 14 hours a day in an administrative role with Paul Thompson, who was the ah, program yeah, director. Yeah, yeah. Dear, dear Paul. And I was starting to real, and I was uh, about 23 at the time, and I was starting to get so wound down because people would come to you with their problems and I would take it on board. Wrong thing to have if you're an administrator. Mm. You need to go, oh, we'll look, we'll look at that, and then go, yeah, what's next? But I sort of took it all on board. I went to Greece on a holiday, yeah. and I had an epiphany in Greece on the beach in Mykonos, I'm sure you have too. And I thought, when I get back, I'm going to resign and I'm, I'm leaving. So this was in 1977. So I've got back to Melbourne, gone to Brendan Sheedy and said, Brendan, I'm out of here. I can't, I'm just, I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown, remembering that dad had had the same thing. Ah. So I thought, no, this is bad. Mm. And he's gone, hang on, don't go. Ted Bull has just gone to Perth and uh, we need someone to do 12 to 3. Would you do 12 to 3 and we'll give you a raise? Okay. <laughs> oh, and also um, there's a new program director down at Channel 7 called Gary Fenton. And um, they're looking for a voiceover guy. Would you like to do, come down and meet him? Okay. So I've gone from working wow. 13 hours a day to working three hours on radio yeah. and doing the booth at Channel 7 from 77 until uh, 2000 and um, what are we now? 23 slash 24, but uh, to 2020. How interesting. 47 years. How interesting how it just came Sliding out. doors. Yeah. If it hadn't been for that beach in Mykonos. I love sort of stories like that because life, well, uh, John Lennon said it, life happens to you while you're busy making plans. You're dead right. Uh, it and, is right. Um, uh, you know, like, it's lovely to hear that uh, when when stories like that happen because And Channel Seven was stuff. such a, a a broad church because it you know, I would I went in there and I've, I'd go to the sports department. I read the news. I, I was, uh, did the weather. Or I, I did so many things and I'd run around the place. And I said, look, I don't want any money for it. I just, just can I help anybody? You know, so I was getting paid as a booth announcer. Um, the, the following program is brought to you by Swiss and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But also got to do all these other things as well. And then somebody needed a voiceover guy for a game show. I said, oh, can I do the warm up too? Oh, you're all right. <laughs> That was The Price is Right in 1980. Right. 81. Yeah. And uh, so that took me for 34 years doing game shows, as well as working on there. And when they asked me to host Family Feud, I've gone, uh, let me think about it. And they've gone, what? You know, everyone would walk over broken yeah, glass yeah, yeah. To, do, to host a show. I said, well, you know, I said, I'll do it, but I'm not going to give up my booth work. Because if I do... Do this hosting job it's for 13 weeks mm. yep. i'm out of a job yep so they've gone oh no it'll go forever well of course it didn't yep the olympics happened in spain and they dropped the show mm. and i went back to doing what i do it, it must be disheartening you know, like in in that media world when things like that happen and you would have seen it happen to so many people talented people along mm, the way absolutely yeah which is why i was so i am so grateful that i 
I gen and that's why I got on with the talent so well because they could tell I didn't want their job. You know, it wasn't sort of like, how come I'm not doing yeah, that? Like yeah, I am now yeah, looking at you. Yeah. How come I'm not sitting in that chair? Yeah, you know, I didn't want that chair. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want that. I wanted to support them because I liked them. Yep. There was only one person I had a real big issue with. Who, who was Don't an absolute pain in the ass, what are you who say was it? a real problem, who I didn't care for at all, and was very, very cruel. And, um, uh, and I, you know, so, but, but, and that was only for a very short time. But the rest of the time, they were all fantastic. But it was that golden era. Thank wasn't you for not it? asking me who it was. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but um, it was a golden era. Yes, it was a golden era. But the people who I was working with, at that time said, this is, when I was there, it was a golden era back there when we first started 1956 television. So, I mean, every era is a golden era. I mean, this is a golden era. Um, I, I know what you're saying, but that's why I hate going to reunions. Oh, yeah, Because they'll go, oh, remember, you know, they remember oh, it's not like it used to be. I say, mate, <laughs> nothing's like it used to be 30 seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I keep looking through the front windscreen, not the rear vision mm. mirror. Now, the, you know, like this, you don't have to answer this, uh, but who would you say is the best person that you've, you know, like on television? Today? Now? No, no, through the, the, your era of being on television. Oh, look, I had such a fun time with um, Steve Izard because it was a chance to do a live TV show. And I was so envious of Pete Smith because he got to do all those live variety shows. And... So doing that show was great because it was dangerous. And every time you went into the studio, uh, it was going to go out live and you had one shot. And as you know, audiences are organic. You'll come in sometimes and go, hello, and they will fall about laughing. And you go, oh, well, this is going to be easy. Or you, or you just turn yourself inside out, get into your bag of tricks, pull everything out, and they're still going. So working on live variety shows was sensational. With Ian Turpey was wonderful, and he was godfather to my eldest, and uh, and wonderful. I like working on thematic shows. That's why I could really enjoy doing uh, Price Is Right or, or uh, you know Deal or No Deal. Um, all those shows, I like doing the thematic shows uh, and and making them better each time. Some did, people hate it. Was there a lot of you know, stopping and starting, or did they? Oh no, they just. Roll on. Really? I mean, we do five days. episodes of Wheel of Fortune, which started at uh, 7.15, and we'd be finished by 10. 30 minutes to do a half-hour show. Turn around, bang. Um, Grundy's. Highly disciplined, which is why I actually did a very short stint at Channel 9 uh, before I went to Channel 7. I filled in for Ken Sparks, and I got to learn a lot of the disciplines of television took them over to Channel 7, who, who were much more fast and loose. Uh, but I was able to take those disciplines across because mm. they fitted with me very well. Also, that spontaneity, um, you worked so well, where I know a lot of the, the t TV programs now, they stop, start, and you, you can feel Do you know it, the you thing think? that I couldn't stand was um, when they started putting uh, IFBs in your ear, that is a communication mm. to the control room. So the, the director or the producer's going, you know, uh, okay, we'll wrap it up, do this, do that. Because I would only ever talk to the floor manager. Yep. And, um, and, and just wait for that hand to come through the curtain. Uh, but uh, now it's all very much internal ear. And would be annoying. And it? you're basically almost AI. Yeah, yeah. Aren't I modern? There's been the second hand wave too, by the way. Just, you're kidding. Just happened. I yeah. hate that person. Who is it? <laughs> What, what do you think about that whole AI thing? Scary as all heck. Scary as all heck. And I actually, today, I saw on Gladiator, the movie, they AI'd a lot of the extras to duplicate them to yep. make it. So, and I thought, oh, you know, there's a great example. I mean, I don't know who I'm talking to now. Are you really David? No, I'm not. Who are you? Oh, well, Who you'll are never you? know. Yeah, but it's, so yes, it is a scary thing. But and it's been around a lot longer than we we think it oh, has. Oh, it been. snuck up. Yeah. And, and as the algorithms have got better, all yep. the stuff has got better. Yeah. Do it, you understand all that technology of stuff? Of course I don't. I do voiceovers. Yeah. I mean, I'm still trying to work out how to use a, a, a rotary dial phone. Um, no, I'm not. But that's why we have kids around. That's why 
here at Channel 31 on Bent TV. There's there's the young'uns mm. who can go, can you fix this? Uh, at Joy, for instance, I had to, I'm trying to migrate my email messages from one to the next, you know, to set up a new account. Have you ever tried to do that? Don't. <laughs> but go to someone who's young. What about all the technology with the phone now? When you get a new phone, um, I have to go to friends uh, to it. get it young to change friends. over. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Yeah, well, they're kids. Yeah, yeah they're kids. You, you need that. So where, where do you see yourself now? You know, like you're still working. I am. Um, well, look, why? I'm, I'm nearly 73. Why? Because I love it. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't feel my age. Uh, I'm fit. I'm happy. I've got a great relationship. Um, I'm able to do so many, uh, a variety of so many things, yep. of emceeing or whatever. And uh, I like helping out now a lot of communities. Uh, I, I Sin, um, the radio station, yep. who are desperately trying to stay on air, mm. doing work for them, sending them voiceovers. I mean, what does it matter? Yeah. I mean, working yeah. on Joy, which I love doing. Yep. And, and you've done stuff here at Channel 31. Apparently and, I and have. And you don't remember. I have. Apparently I have. But <laughs> And that's fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, usually the answer is never no. It's always, sure, what can I do to help? Uh, and why stop doing it? it and exactly. And it keeps paid. the oil moving through the system. And yeah. Uh, and, and keeping the pipes going. I mean, the same as you. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to go and sit down and, you know, get a caravan park and go and move somewhere? Although, no, but I mean, no, I love it. Love the business. What about city living? You know, like mentioning a caravan park and, and being away. Do you prefer city living or oh, would you yeah. like to be in a caravan? No, no, no. I like being right in town. I've got a place in St Kilda Road. It's, it's, uh, it's gorgeous because you just... Everywhere you can go to the city. I mean, I've been to so many shows recently. As I said last night, seeing Hans at uh, at Crown, and uh, the week before went and saw a, a lovely ska group called Bad Manners, and a oh yeah, uh, at, at Max Watts with uh, a mosh pit and bodies being thrown up in a sticky carpet. And I said, oh, this is living. You know, it's just great. And was music a big part of your life growing up? Sure, being in radio, absolutely, yeah, totally. Loved it all. It yeah. was great. That's where also I have a problem with joy because I have to get uh, Triana and a few others in to go, uh, how do you say that name? Mm. Um, but uh, look, as long as... I mean, I was listening to classical on the way in here, but I love ska. Um, if the music's good, the music's good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John Deeks, thank you but so much. But then in 1984... <laughs> oh, another hand no, wave, no, was it? Yeah, well, you're, you're it. You're over. Really? Mm. By the way, this is the best vodka. Thank uh, you, yeah, Sam. Straight. straight. Oh, yeah. We, we only, ah. only do the best. John Deeks, thank you so much for being on Ben TV today. Lovely to be here, David, and thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. I'm David Hunt. You've been watching Ben TV, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.